Hello. A week or so ago, I had an HD24 uh, Alesis digital audio recorder in. We were using that with an Alesis ADAT uh, player, which is an 8-track machine recording on to Super VHS tape. And I said it'd be really cool if I could also record onto the HD24 machine from my DTRS machines, which also record 8 audio tracks, this time onto 8mm tape. Well, now I have the interface box that will convert from the TDIF-1 format, digital audio uh, signal on the DTRS machines from Sony and Tascam, to the ADAT uh, optical connection used by Lesis that I could record onto the HD24. I hope you're still with me on all this. So, the only trouble is, I don't believe there's a power supply. Let's do an unbox, see what we have in my uh, box of goodies here. Here's my box of goodies. So, I've got two units. Ah, the chap who sent me these did mention that he had something else as well. So let's see what we have. This is the machine, the piece of equipment I was most interested in. TDIF-1 to ADAT interface format converter called IF-TAD and it takes the signal from the uh, Sony or Tascam DTRS machines on this D cable and it comes with what I hope is the right cable. It's not the right cable is it? Ah, I don't know what that cable's for but it's not the right one for this. Okay, let's hope a straight through wired uh, D connector will work. I forget at the moment whether it's male or female on the other end. So I need a cable to go from the player to this. What else? This says word sync out. Um, I think that's for when you're going the other way from optical in and going out to record on the Tascam. But I'm not going that way so I won't need it. What I'm going to be doing is feeding this from the DTRS machine and I'll want that light to come on to say that it's valid data and then the optical out from there I'll feed into the multi-track recorder. So what else is here? This cable must be something to do with this. MMC38 MMC interface unit. Hmm. It's got uh, various frame rates here, 24, 25, 29.97 and 30. Um, it's something to do with remote control because it says remote out to DA38 and remote in from RC848 and LTC out. So it's something to do with remote control options. This says sync in DA38 MMC remote out. So that would connect to there. Right. And then this would go to the DA38. I'm not entirely sure what DA38 is so I'll go and look that up. But right now this isn't immediately what I need to use. Oh, have a look at the front as well. So we've got MIDI in and out, and all the switch settings corresponding to this. So it's something to do with MIDI. Interesting equipment, and it's relevant, of course, to the Tascam DTRS format, but not something I need right this moment. Now, we have a problem with this, we don't have the power supply. And it makes a point that it's the Tascam PS P414 only. And there's something else that worries me. Let me just check something. Okay, it says on the manual that the PS P414 output is 9 volt DC, 6 watts. And this clearly says 12 volt sent a negative from the PS P414. So something's wrong. That makes me extremely nervous. 
So I think before I power this up, I'm going to take a look inside and see if I can work out what the power arrangements are here. Uh, maybe it's just got a regulator anyway, and it won't matter if it's 9 or 12 volts. But uh, let me check first. And why does it insist on its own power supply? Is it just because they're being difficult, or is there a real technical reason? Right, let's have a look inside this then. There's a big transformer there. Why? Is it a transformer or maybe a choke? Are there any clues in here as to what the real voltage requirement is? There's a 470 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. That doesn't give us any clues. And that moves on to some 16 volt capacitors, which still doesn't really give us any clues. And there's some 74HC series logic. What I'm not seeing is a regulator. I'm not keen on taking the PCB out because that looks a little bit non-trivial, an awful lot of screws to take apart. I believe there is a regulator. Oh good. It's marked up A 8CJ4. I don't know what that is. It would appear to be that regulator is a 5 volt reg. So actually the input voltage, be it 9 or 12 volts, doesn't matter much. There are some resistors and bits and bobs between the regulator and the outside world. We could play on the safe side and I think and head more towards 9 volts than 12. Okay, so why are they fussing that it must only use their, their power supply? I don't know. Right, so I'll connect that to probably 9 volts initially, centre negative, and then we'll see if it. I can connect it up to the uh, Tascam player and get the data light to come on. Right, let's give it a whirl. Okay, so I've set this uh, universal power supply up to 9 volts, connected it up to uh, the correct size barrel plug for that, um, and I've heat shrunk the thing on so that it won't uh, ever come adrift on us and it's set for 9 volts center negative so center negative should get 9 it says 9.3 volts offload so that seems to be perfectly sensible so hopefully I can connect this up and at the very least the power light will come on Yes. Of course, it doesn't tell you much about whether the unit's working, but that's a good start. Maybe the barrel plug's a little bit on the long side, but it seems okay. So now I need to get a cable from there to the um, DTRS 8mm uh, player and then see if the data light comes on. The interface and also the uh, DTRS machine both have 25-way female D connectors. So I need a male-to-male -male fully wired 25-way D cable. Well, I don't happen to have one, but I do have some 25-way D male plugs, IDC type, and some scrap cables from old computer. So I could uh, repurpose this. Is that enough connectors? Conductors, yes, I could repurpose something like one of these cables, whichever one has the correct amount of conductors, not that one, just for the ribbon cable, because I don't have any 20, uh, any 25-way ribbon cable, so I'll reuse this, bit grubby, bit horrible, but it'll do for the job, and make sure that I wire pin 1 to pin 1, that's really important. Right, I'll make that up. OK, this is all a bit Heath Robinson at the moment, but let's see what we can do. We have the interface unit here, connected via this connect cable I've just built and tested, to this Tascam DA98HR. Right. <laughs> when I power this up, the power light will come on, as we've seen already. When I give it some audio from this, I'm hoping that 
this LED here, labelled data, illuminates. Let's uh, give it a whirl. Okay, powered it up. Switch on the Tascam. Tascam, HR it says. Right, put in a random tape and press play. That's playing and this has not come on. Oh, that's a disappointment. What am I doing wrong? Okay, so now we have a Tascam uh, manufactured uh, cable which is going from the 98HR here to this adapter box and it's got the valid data light on even though actually the machine's not playing at a second and the uh, light behind the um, optical output is on so we can now I think start up the HD24 down here where is it start up the HD24 and see if we can connect this optical connection and make it work let's give it a whirl since the Alesis ADA X220 player is connected to the optical input port numbers 1 to 8 I've decided to connect this DTRS adapter box to port 9 to 16 so I don't have to change over how many optical fibers when I go from one format to the other so here I am recording onto channels 9 to 16 on the HD24 then a simple batch file renames the resulting WAV files from track 019 to track 16 back to track 01 to track 08. You can then import uh, the resulting WAV files into editing software. I'm demonstrating here with Audacity, but recording studios will probably use something like Avid Pro Tools. So it all worked out rather nicely in the end, didn't it? Well, not so quick. Something happened that I didn't catch on camera, and I want to tell you about it. Remember at one point I had the straight through uh, cable rather than the proper Tascam cable connecting the player to the adapter box? Well, that's really bad because it means outputs are connected to other outputs which could potentially be damaging. But it gets much worse than that. When I disconnected the power supply to the adapter box, the power on LED stayed lit. Um, a bit dimmer than normal, but lit nonetheless. Now, this is really bad. What's going on here? is that signals arriving from that cable are actually powering the box. Now you might say, well, how can that happen? Well, most uh, CMOS devices are built with ESD protection diodes. These are diodes on the I.O. pins, which are designed to protect against static electricity. So they're designed to handle low currents, but possibly fairly high voltages momentarily, discharging those voltages to uh, the supply of ground pins. What was happening was that any high signals uh, that were arriving at those pins were uh, causing currents to flow through those uh, ESD protection diodes into the supply rail of the IC and hence powering the whole box up. This is really bad because those IC, those IC um, ESD protection diodes are not intended to be used in this way. Uh, there's a real hazard that they could fail, they could get hot and go short circuit which would destroy the IC and make the whole adapter box fail. Now fortunately we appear to have done no lasting damage because everything works but it was a bit of a moment. You can see why I concentrated rather more on disconnecting that situation than I did on filming it uh, when that event happened. Well I hope you've learned something from this experience. I know I have if not least to maybe check the wiring a little bit more carefully before uh, connecting up. Uh, do remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.